Hi everyone, this is Menz here, playing the Tier 9 American Tank Destroyer, the T-95, which is known as basically the slowest tank in World of Tanks. However, it does have a lot of armor to kind of make up for that. Just going over the armor, as you can kind of see 305mm on the front, which makes it virtually immune to everything going off of those numbers. However, since your armor is pretty flat in some areas, a lot of Tier 10 tanks can either shoot premium rounds through you, or with tier 10 tank destroyers can just kind of go right through your armor. Now with the standard credit rounds for tank destroyers at tier 10, it is a 50-50 chance basically, but at the same time they can still go through it, which kind of negates the T-95's advantage somewhat since when it was first released it was pretty much the quintessential bunker tank where you can just sit out there and nothing can damage you because your only real weak spots are these top hatches here which pretty much everything can go through it and they are very easy to hit close up because the T95 doesn't move very quickly now you have to keep that in mind because when you do get close to enemies if you're playing aggressive and trying to bully them around with your gun they can just pretty much click right through here every single time and take you out pretty easily now as far as mobility goes top speed pretty low engine and weight is not very good because your engine is very weak for your actual 90 ton weight which unfortunately while you are capped by your top speed you're gonna find it's difficult to reach it especially if you're going up a hill because you're pretty much a slow moving brick in a way now your gun just starting out here hopefully nobody does this but I see a lot of people with the 105 on the T95, which carrying over, you can skip the 120 millimeter on the T28, but I recommend you getting that because, yes, it costs 51,000 experience, but it will make the T28 really good. But moving on to the T95, you start out with the 105, which is pretty terrible at tier 9. So you definitely want to get the 120. So at least you have very good damage per minute and you're able to damage things. That way you can then unlock the 155mm, which makes the T95 a lot better tank. Now, it's going back to the tank itself. As you see, the 155mm, I keep trying to say 105mm, but the 155mm gun, 750 damage per round, very good. Accuracy is a little low, which makes fighting at long distances a little difficult. Aiming time, nothing bad there. Penetration is very good. 276mm for the AP round, and 320 for the APCR for tougher tier 10 tanks, which is great. And the rate of fire is high enough to where you do have a very large amount of firepower to, at your disposal. However, since you don't really have a very quick firing gun on this, if you do miss your shot or someone decides to try to flank you, you only really get one chance to track them or kill them before they get around and kill you. Your side armor is pretty good. As you see here, you have double tracks, which makes a very large void here. They're covered by pretty good spaced armor, so if any heat shells or HE hits this, you're going to take like almost no damage. Now, your 152 millimeters on the side is pretty good and this section is sloped so you can get some bounces against lower tiers shooting at you or shots that hit at a high angle. Now your rear armor since you are slow and will be flanked in this is very thin and your engine basically center mass of your tank is very weak so you will catch on fire a lot if people get behind you. For equipment I run a gun rammer and ventilation to help with the reload and super heavy spall liner to help with SPG fire and HE shells because you get a lot thrown at you. You could sub out the spall liner or ventilation because spall liner does make you heavier and slower. For a toolkit, which I don't have a repair skill on this yet, toolkit always helps T95. Or coated optics to help out your V range so you can see people quicker if you're alone that are trying to flank you. So playing the T95, you either want to kind of stay at range so people aren't able to hit your weak spots very easily 
and you're able to use your armor. However, staying at range you might fall behind the front line and you aren't really able to catch up in time to be useful or by the time you do catch up you're behind and you get swarmed. So it's really a blend between playing aggressive, which aggressive in the T95 is very slow, but not getting too close to the enemy to where they can flank you easily if you don't have a lot of help, or you get close enough to the enemy where they can hit your weak spots, mainly your hatches, very easily. So downside of this tank is it's freaking slower than pretty much anything. It's like watching grass grow. T95's wet dream? Not really because I'm attacking here. You only have 10 minutes for assault, so I'm going to be hard pressed to be able to do anything other than push up the left side of the map. If I go on the right side, it will be very difficult for me to actually get anywhere in time to where I can help my team and do something. So I'm going to play semi risky here. I'm not going to go up the left side here. I'm going to kind of hug the ridge at first just so I get to the battle a little bit faster. I'm still going to be there pretty much last. Which this M48 don't know why he's pushing very hard. There's no arty. But if he starts moving this way I might be able to pop him. Never mind. Don't need to. But it's his keep on my slow forward crawl here. Now, being slow, yes, you're taken out of the fight for a while. But what's more sad at times is your team kind of dies and pushes too far. And you're not able to really do anything to help them. Hopefully our mediums up there stay safe. Doing an alright job so far. I just want to put myself out here. Ooh shit, we're about to be flanked. Okay, take this route. This T-37 is definitely going to die. But I can at least get out here. Hopefully, fuck, and I missed. I was about to say, hopefully kill this guy, but that's where the accuracy comes into play on this, and unfortunately, I aim just a little bit too low. Okay, so now I can finally think about shooting an enemy up here. Which, as you can see, our team's doing very well, so I'm not in a huge position to worry about doing great here, but I would like to actually shoot something and hit it. But, once again, one of the downsides is if your team does too well, then you're not able to actually get anywhere fast enough to do anything. Might be able to hit this VK if he keeps pushing, but he looks like he's going for a swim. Uh, come on. No. Don't really get why people jump into the water. You're just going to end up paying even more to repair your tank. Which I can't even hit him there because he's behind a little ridge. But yay, I've done nothing. Okay, am I going to be able to hit this M46? Oh my god, I hit something! But matches like this, it's bittersweet. Yes, you're winning, but at the same time, it's not very fun. Which I don't even think I'm going to be able to... Oh, he's just going to ram him. 
Thanks a lot. Can't hit this type 59 because obviously he's not really playing. I might be able to hit him if he's over here. Don't know what this guy's doing. He's he's probably just a freaking bot. But yeah, unfortunately, first match in this thing does show you a situation you're going to be faced with a lot. Either your team's doing good and you're not able to do anything, or your team does bad and you're not able to catch up in time. By the time you get do get there, it's pretty much over with. Now if the T95, let's say it could move, say, 18 kilometers an hour or something. It would be a lot better in my opinion because right now, while the speed is justified because of its armor and gun and its design, it's still a little bit too low to actually make sense to play on some maps. But overall, as you can see, I did 227 damage, destroyed one tank, and I shot two shells. Hooray, let's hop into another battle here. Now, I'm including matches like this. I'm not going to bother cherry-picking my matches and putting in the best ones just to kind of give you a sense of t 95s doing awesome. I'm including matches like this because it does portray the T95 how you're actually going to play it for most of your matches. Yes, you do get the matches where you block, say, 20,000 damage with your armor. You do a ton of damage, and for whatever reason, people can't hurt you. But they're few and far between actual matches where you're struggling to keep up with your team. You're struggling to get to where you need. So it does point out the flaws of the T95. While I do think it is a very fun and unique tank, it is very limited in how well it can perform because you're pretty much a one-trick pony. You have good frontal armor and a hard-hitting gun. Aside from that, you don't really have anything else. So, once again, I'm cut off from even thinking about going north. If I go down south here, I'm very close to the enemy, and they can hit my weak spots. So I kind of had to keep that in my mind, because right now, no one's going down there except for maybe that Ferdinand, so I might need to help him. If I go in the middle here, that's ideal to me, because there is one Artie, but... He doesn't hit terribly hard, so if he hits my frontal armor, I'm okay. Which, if I go south, he can pop up into A6 and shoot down and hit my engine deck. But if nobody heads south, I will have to head down there, unfortunately. Lorraine versus Batchat. I wonder how this is going to end. Lorraine won, because he got the first shot off. If you thought I thought the Batch Hat was going to win, you're wrong, because Lorraine, while it does have less damage per shot, he can still out-kill a Batch Hat. Alright, so there are three heavy tanks we have not spotted. So I am going to head down here to help out my IS-4 or else we're going to be in some trouble here. You know shit, it's freaking an E-100 against our IS-8. We're not in a good spot here, we're pretty much out manned in most areas. Which I'm surprised he took a shot at that Ferdinand. Like, yes, I am kind of leaving my butt open here. But I need to help out this IS-8 with dealing with this guy. Or else we're going to be a bit of a pickle. Unfortunately, as you see there, he just went through right, right through my armor. Didn't even think twice or really aim at me. He had a heat round. Why not just punch right through me? Now the only way I'm going to survive is if I actually move up here to attack. But the E100 
it's pulling back. So I actually have to turn around now because these guys are going to get to the point where they can shoot my butt. Trying to set up to help you, but fuck. I can't believe I bounced that shot. And unfortunately these guys can go through me if they use premium rounds. And I'm dead. So, unfortunately my team didn't exactly do good in this match. Which, T95, if you're stuck with a bad team... Okay, this guy just killed himself. Thank you. Do what you want though, because we already lost. But um, if you're stuck with a bad team, then you're not able to really do much about it at all because you're too slow to actually get anywhere. Unless if you're on a map where you can get yourself out there quick. And it's really hard for you to make up for your team if they fall behind. But had I even went south, we still would have been run over because there's no way we would have been able to stop them. And there wasn't anything I really could push in the middle in time or up north to change the outcome of this. So, yet another match where it points out one of the T95's flaws. So overall, nothing too spectacular here. 1,726 damage, blocked 800 damage, made a little bit of credit. Let's see if third time's the charm here. Now, you would think that maps like, say, Himmelsdorf would be good for this, but since you are fighting close on those maps, which, oh, look, I just got freaking Himmelsdorf. <laughs> I'm recording this live, too, so it's not even like I am doing a voiceover. Since you're fighting very close on this map, it makes your weak spots easier to hit. And also, since you are fighting in a city, you don't necessarily want to do that with non turret at tanks because while you can fight around corners easily it basically allows enemies to either get around and flank you because it's so the way to describe it is it's basically like a grid and enemies yes if you're watching one corner there's always going to be a corner behind you that they can flank you in most situations, unless if you're butt up against the edge of the map, in which case, more likely than not, you're being useless. But it is something to where I like fighting in kind of open maps where, yes, there is some cover, but at least I can move around to be able to stop people from flanking me, rather than being stuck on a corner, having an enemy there, and I can't turn around to be able to fight another enemy, because basically, one of them is going to be able to shoot me. So I'm just going to set up here. Maybe I'll get lucky and I can get a shot off here quick. Which this AMX might provide that to me. It's... There we go. So at least I shot somebody this match. So I'm already on the up and up. Granted, he got hit by... Yep, he got hit by something hard. Now I have two TDs and already behind me. So I am going to push up a little bit further. Just give them a little bit more space. Because I have the armor over on this side. Unfortunately, I'm not going to push over on the right here. I'm just going to push up here first to begin with. It'd be nice if I could get a shot here, but I'm actually too short to hit them without 
being in a different spot. Now this GPZ is pushing. I'm probably not going to be able to hit him through this wall, but what the hell. At least I'll be able to spot him a little bit sooner. Hello. I got him to slow down a little bit. And at least I got him to hit my track. So that worked out. Surprisingly. It's kind of surprised that worked out as well as it did. I guess gotta prevent him from getting a good well placed shot on me, but at least I slowed him down. So I'm gonna keep backing up as much as I can here. This is Centaurian here, so I had to keep him in the back of my head. And of course he freaking chose the one time where I wasn't looking to push across. Okay, our team's almost in place to be able to get here to help. Shit, that hurt, but once again, your armor is good, but you're not immune to tier 10 TDs. I could kill him, but I'm more concerned about being flanked. So I'm just going to keep pulling back to where my team can help me. Shit. Uh, he almost got set on fire and killed. Let's see if I can't get a shot off on this leopard. Fuck, I missed. That was a big miss. Sorry, object, but thinking about myself a little bit here. Just gotta pull back enough. Ah, uh, fuck, I could have pushed up and helped him actually. The GPZ's moving. Moving, moving, moving. I'm not gonna be able to get him in time, but shit this Artie's aiming at me. Fortunately I'm trying to do stuff, but at the same time I, if I push out, I'm going to be flanked. I should have helped that object, but that's all on me for not helping him. Shit. I keep fucking up here. Uh, if he moves forward, I can get him. Enemy this Centurion one, this opens up me to be able to move now. So I have an E5 on my right. So I'm going to move up here and help out. Shit. Yeah, that's not good. Now this guy, he's not reloaded yet. So hopefully I'll be able to hit him. Might not be able to. Oop, never mind, E5 got him. Good job, E5. I am glad I have this E5 and T54 behind me to help me. I'm sure they'll be able to get this Type 61, but you never know. So I'm gonna pull back here. There we go. But yeah, I definitely played that a little too safe. Had I helped that object, we would have had a lot easier time. I'm just going to pull out this way, just in case if he's trying to get around us to go to our cat.
but as you can see that JP just went right through my thickest part of my armor but unfortunately it's not angled so a lot of tank destroyers at tier 10 know that and even people using premium rounds and they can just boop go right through Hoping he just caps. We'll be fine if he does. Here he is. I might be hit here, but there we go. And he's gone. A <laughs> little bit lucky there, but a yeah, super heavy spawn liner does come into play. So overall, a uh, Decent match. Did 3,066 damage. I could have did a little bit better had I played a little bit more aggressively. I almost blew it there. Blocked 1,050 damage. Still made a decent profit. You make a good profit in this because you don't need many premium rounds. And you do do a lot of damage per shot. So you need a couple shots to rack up a lot of damage. So anyway, T95. It's a good tank in what it does. However, like I said, it's a one-trick pony where, unfortunately, because you are very slow and don't have a turret, and your armor, while good, is very situational still, it does make it hard to use on some maps or some teams, and especially while playing alone. So it's just something to keep in mind, and I think it's fun to play here or there because it is a very unique tank. However... It is still severely limited, and while you might have awesome matches where you block everything, like two, or not 2,000, but 20,000 damage at times, and do a ton of damage, it's very few and far between, and the T95 performs closer to what my first two matches were. So, just keep that in mind, and going into it, make sure you get that 120 millimeter before going to it, and... If you like slow tanks, this is a pretty unique, fun, slow, slow tank to play. So anyway, thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my website, wotguru.com.